welcome back YouTube. Um, I didn't think that it was going to be my day of filming, but Cooper's just informed us that I've got to do it. So I'm sorry, but you've got my mug today and my session. It's not actually that much different to Cooper's, to be fair, today. We both have very weak deltoids. Um, I don't know why I did the dinosaur arms there, but you know, it is what it is. So our sessions are, are pretty similar. He uses some slightly different machines, because there's some machines, especially when it comes to push, that I can't use, because they come really wide. And as much as I'm not exactly the smallest human anymore, but I'm not very wide either, because I am still a very petite lady. So I can't actually use them, especially a lot of the prime pieces, because they just come so wide, and I feel like I'm doing a fly instead of a breast. So some of my machine options are slightly different but pretty much similar setup, but we'll go through it. Obviously, I'll I'll go through some bits. There might be some useful tips. I don't know, people just probably think I'm oh, fucking shit up, Meg. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get on with it and we'll probably do like a little bit of a brief overview of how things are going in off season when we finish training. actually reduced down the amount of mobility things that we do before a session because when we had Kyle Baxter in he was saying that we were spending too long basically wasting time and energy with the amount that we were doing because we'd got about three different mobility plans from three different people and we were doing all three of them all at once so it's taken us like 30 minutes so it does feel better to come in just do some little bits and then just crack straight on like he says the best mobility that you can do is doing a movement properly warming up effectively with that and then just cracking on with the exercise so lessons learned <laughs> The reason that we do this is basically instead of doing all of the shit mobility stuff that we were doing before, some of it we still do, some of it, some of it wasn't shit, but it was overloaded with too many things. But obviously when you do pressing or when you are doing pressing movements, your main bulk of stability comes from your back, really. Everything, flat tight core, everything. So if we are to obviously create more stability when we're about to press, a big portion of that, a big factor of that is your lap. So that's why we do this. We've actually found that we've been more stable when we're pressing, found that strength's been able to build a little bit more when we've actually incorporated this. So definitely a very useful tool. Um, and people who say, so I have it a lot with clients, especially those that haven't really got that much knowledge when it comes to training, always say, oh, I'm doing this movement and I can feel something else. Most movements you'll be able to feel something else because you have to have stability from other places, not just the muscle that you're supposed to be working. It's like when somebody does a squat and it's like, oh, I only feel my quads, I don't really feel my glutes and adductors. Well, if you're doing a squat pattern, you know that your glutes and adductors are going to work, be working to a degree. I think I remember seeing a person once, somebody was doing a, a sumo deadlift and they went, 
I started feeling my yeah quad, so I just stopped doing it. I was like, yeah, great, great. is a cable wire raise. It's actually very good for working the full structure of your delt rather than it kind of just being a lion cuff side raise and obviously prior to pressing you want to be able to kind of work the delt in its full function really before obviously getting to work so it's a really good useful exercise. I actually had a side delt movement at this point in my programming when we first started. We've changed this to be the first exercise and then put the um, side belt work a little bit later into the session so that we can get a little bit more out of it. I've actually felt some good pumps from it and I mean I know that it's, it's not a good thing to go by but it makes me feel good, it makes me feel stable when I'm pressing so I must be doing something. I'm gonna say, where's my elbow sleeve? But Cuba's got his head on it. Your position on the bench is very important. Your posture on the bench is really important because if you can't keep your elbow path where it needs to be, you'll end up being elbow path kind of here. So you're driving your elbows out and back, which will actually limit your range of motion unless you have the mobility of a shoulder gone. But the majority of us don't. So having your posture really locked in, and your core nice and tight, chest elevated, but not to the point where we're like really arching the back because again, that will limit your range of motion. It's important to get that position completely right so the elbow path can be right alongside the rib cage to keep your shoulder kind of health good and also help you to build up that strength really well too, keeping that range of motion exactly where it needs to be. I can tell I'm getting heavy because I keep waking myself up from having really bad pins and needles and I'm laying on my side, leaning onto my arm. I'm near enough peak off season weight right now, so <laughs> nine weeks per shirt, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I do stick to plan, I promise. I just like to get heavy apparently. But I'm naturally quite lean. If I took my clobber off, well, we'll leave that for another day. Maybe next time we prep. For now, it's the big baggy jumps.
You want a full ride? Just come on. Strong. Good. Good. Come on. One more. Right. Come on. Get tight. Beautiful, that's it, well done. Excellent. Just tried to beat their numbers, but you know. Can't quite get theirs, so I try and get more reps. <laughs> that was good, that was 10 reps. Really strong. It's a shame no one's watching. Just saying, I'm going to try and um, get Mark on his back off as my top set. That's the goal. It's doable. He might cry there. Just a little bit. Some of them Irish tears. I don't know what's the difference between British or Irish tears, but I reckon Irish tears are worse. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's all right. Let's go. Come on. Drive. Nice. Come on. Nice. Yes. I'm gonna do a two, a five, and then a two and a half plus. Get the air in and really fucking get that big pitch filled with air. Expand it, come on. Hard fucking brakes, your brakes is not just your gut, it's your rib cage as well, come on. Let's get it. Let's work, come on! Strong as fuck, come on! Good! 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 Drive! Strong right, that's your right! Beautiful, perfect. And again. Through, come on. Through, come on. Here we does all the wiggly reps at the end. You sit out at me for doing them. They will do wiggly reps. They take you away, they take away from your next press. That's what he used to say. Look at him with all these wiggly reps. So, lots of people, my clients, <laughs> probably other people, like to complain that their upper sessions don't progress as much as what their lower body sessions do. Obviously, as a female, and the stability that you have around your elbows is obviously much less than other joints because we are quite petite up top, like a lot of other people. And for everybody, that is the same. So that's probably why it progresses at a little bit of a less of a progressive rate as what your lower body does. But 
do you actually approach your sessions for your upper body sessions the way in which you approach your lower body sessions and for the most part for the people who are maybe watching can probably say no I don't so if you approach with the same mindset that same kind of intent of wanting to progress you will find that you will be able to do that but you have to have that real burn inside you like you do on a squat a deadlift etc Nine ten, come on. I get asked quite often why I'm quite slow with my reps <laughs> or controlled with my reps. I don't think that I've yet nailed training enough to warrant being a little bit quicker still with control. When somebody's been training for a really long time, someone like Jordan, someone like James Collins Head, even if their reps are a little bit quick, they're still under control. They've still got so much tension throughout the whole thing because they have so much kind of experience within that. I haven't got that yet, like I haven't been training 
properly for a really long time. So until I get to that point, that's why I'm a little bit kind of cautious and careful. And obviously prior to that, when I wasn't like that, I wasn't growing. So until I get to a point where I can have control and tension all the time because my body knows what it does, I have that experience, then I can probably start to be a little bit quicker. But learn how to train properly first before you do that. I was only supposed to do two sets, don't tell Kirch, oops. Hot <laughs> nicks. Let's go. Seven, two.
So a cable ab crunch. As Gaz has just said, lots of people butcher it. So why don't we give a demonstration and an explanation. The idea is to use your abs. I mean, I know that I don't have the best abs, but I have trained abs for a very long time in this sport and previous sports, even though I don't like it. So when it comes to this, you need to make sure that you're literally using no momentum from anywhere. No momentum from your legs, no momentum from your hips, no momentum from your arms, no pulling from your arms. Everything literally needs to come from your abs. You need to focus on really being able to activate your TVA, which is the lower part of your abdomen, bringing it all in from there and then starting to crunch from the top. If you think about pulling with your arms or kind of rotating in with your hips, you won't use your abs. So just make sure that there's zero momentum and everything's coming from there and then coming all the way through your core. Lots of numbers progress or kind of weight progress, which is obviously what the girl is right now. Obviously getting strong to get massive, which is something that like lots of people don't think that you've got to get strong to get big. And perhaps that works for some people. For me, the best kind of progression that I've seen within my physique has been since I've, I've gotten strong. So yeah, and gotten strong obviously effectively. We don't do kind of shit reps, maybe a few shit reps but for the most part, quite good reps. Off season's going very well, feeling very good. Have a, my blood's kind of booked in two weeks. So just before we go to America to watch the Olympia, we will be getting our bloods done. I had my bloods done about 15 times when I was in hospital. Um, so I didn't actually get them done by Eve, I'll just push her because I'd had them done quite frequently. Um, but everything came back in check and that was like three weeks per show all hormone panel was fully in check. Um, so obviously a, a good successful kind of reverse out even though I was a little bit unwell. Obviously my um, infection rate was very high when I had them done, but everything else is very much in line. So very happy. Look forward to seeing what they look like in a couple of weeks. And then obviously um, off season escalations will happen from there, um, which I'm very excited about. Once we've obviously broken down the timeline, because I won't compete until kind of 2024 at the start of the year but we will do kind of start start of the year and could I compete next this next coming year and be competitive perhaps yes me and Kuba were actually having this conversation in the car but me and Kuba do bodybuilding together and Kuba is definitely not ready to compete next year and um, obviously Jordan and I are joint coaching Kuba obviously Jordan has a lot more knowledge and Kuba has a lot more knowledge on the assistant front than what I am, but it's helping me to progress my knowledge. So that's obviously fantastic for me, uh, but obviously from kind of a mindset perspective, I keep him in line, which is actually quite nice, um, which is working really well, but because of us doing it together and wanting to do it together, and that's kind of the choice that we have made. Obviously, I won't compete until 2024 when he does as well. So, Kibble will have a very competitive package then because his off season so far has been very successful from a coach's eye, has been very successful. Good kind of reverse out, health day is done into a nice solid push. And he does look really bursting full, but still so lean, especially for this body weight. So, that's really exciting. And then, obviously, myself, I'm just trying to get massive. Everything seems to be going really well and I'm really happy with how the, the body is responding to kind of little changes and how hungry I am because I'll be honest, purse show has always, especially since I've been with Cuba, my first ever purse show didn't go very well but like the ones after that have been okay. I've never had a terrible purse show but definitely when it came to kind of eating off plan definitely ate a lot more than probably what I should but not to the point where I was over gorging just to the point where kind of digestion that e evening was a little bit off that then made it a little bit off for the following few days which then allowed my appetite to suppress quite quickly 
Whereas this time around in off season, in kind of the reverse out from the show, kind of my off plan meals have been a little bit more reserved. Mostly because I'm not really that bothered. I'm more bothered about getting to the Olympia than eating some food. So for me, kind of, I eat for enjoyment and more so for the social aspect with friends, family, etc. in Cuba. Definitely not overgorging. I still feel very hungry when I finish food, my off plan, and then back to normal plan the next day. So things are going very well. And obviously, Cuba has been making very nice baked goods, the calorie baked goods, and it's actually my um, turn this weekend. So if it turns out like shit and he's fuming, God knows what will happen. I'll probably not be in the next video because I'll be six feet under. I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, but we're going to try a blueberry cheesecake. No, it was blueberry and white chocolate cheesecake. But obviously the white chocolate comes from whey protein rather than actual white chocolate. So we'll see how that goes. If uh, it goes well, it might be posted on YouTube. If it's an absolute shambles, like I say, I probably won't be here anymore. So this could be the last video. But please like, share, subscribe. Everything helps us, helps the channel, helps build kind of what we're trying to educate upon. And hopefully you find it useful. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover personally, please drop a comment below and I'll be happy to do so.